Good morning, Zengo Nation. It's Ryan Anderson here. So excited to have our special guest speaker with us on the phone. He's uh, somebody that needs little to no introduction. We've all read his books. We've all heard his lectures and seminars and his his philosophies and principles. We are definitely excited to have him coming as our keynote speaker to our Rush convention in September. Definitely excited to have that. So without further ado, I want to welcome uh, the one and only Mr. Robert Kiyosaki. Good morning, Robert. How are you doing, sir? I'm doing great, Ryan. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Welcome to the, our, good, our good morning Get Amped call with Zango. <laughs> I like getting at with Zango. <laughs> great, great talk, great title, great title. Yeah, thank you, thank you. No, we've got a lot of great things going on here, and we're all definitely amped and excited to be um, doing what we're doing, but more importantly, excited to have you coming and, and being a part of our convention with us in September. We've all been reading your books. We're getting prepared to, to listen to you live there, so this is great. Well, I know you are a, a busy man, so I just had a couple of questions I wanted to dive in and and do that as we've been studying and looking at your books and, and le leading your um, your philosophies. You know, Rich Dad Poor Dad is uh, obviously one of the great uh, great books. I know you've written several books since then. But you know, the, this economy, the, everything is changing. A lot of things are happening around the world. And so I just wanted to ask, kind of, what are your thoughts about some of the people who call the old way of doing things in regards to going to school, getting a job, starting the forty forty plan, forty hours a week for forty years? Kind of, what's your thoughts around that? Well, it's an obsolete idea, obviously. You know, I mean, the world has changed so much, and to be thinking about job security and high-paying job and all that, you must have your head stuck in the sand. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's really, really foolish, because my prediction is unemployment is going to go up. Now, that's bad for people who have the 40-40 plan, but it's great for people in Zango. You know what I mean? These are going to be your new recruits. These are the people that you can help re-educate them, you know, twist their brain to see another point of view out there. Because most people are trained to be employees. That's the 4040 plan. Zango trains people to be entrepreneurs and investors. That's a much better future. Nice. No, and, and I agree. You know, it's definitely about empowering, and that's, you know, the message that we at Zango, and I know that's a, definitely a strong message that you carry as well is about empowering people to go out and, and take control of their lives, you know, which uh, definitely, you know, um, leads me to that next point. I think a, a large part that holds people back is the fear of failure. And in your book, you talk not only about how to be successful, but you also talk about the importance of, of failure. Would you care to elaborate just a little bit on that as well? Oh, absolutely. Is, you know, my poor dad was the head of education for the state of Hawaii, Ph.D., just a great guy. And my rich dad was my best friend's father. But the thing I noticed about school teachers is the way they get you to be an employee is school kills your spirit. They must kill that entrepreneur spirit. Otherwise, if you, if you don't kill that spirit, you won't do what they tell you to do. So when you talk about Zango empowering people, that's the primary reason I will come and speak because we've got to almost shed the curse of going to school to become an employee. You see, if you think that going to school and getting a job is smart, they had to kill your spirit to sit in a box for 40 years and you know all that stuff. You have to be dead to do that. That's why I call them corpse orations, not corporation, corpse orations. So Zango's job is to empower people to become entrepreneurs and rekindle that entrepreneur spirit, which is killed in school. Absolutely. Yeah, no, and it is. I, I might have to borrow that corpse duration from you. That's a, that's a wonderful thing. I really I, like I, that. I, I get into so much trouble with that word. You know, I, I put up corporation, and I just kind of add an S-E in there. <laughs> <laughs> I really like that. But, you know, it is. You know, I think sometimes, um, you know, people get into that frame of mind and they get into kind of a, a comfortable, complacent lifestyle. Um, but we can't be complacent anymore because the reality is is that there's no security in that. You know, um, those those days of old where, where people, you know, my dad retired from the post office after 42 and a half years. 
And the only thing he got from that was a letter that he misspelled his name, and his name's Randy. How do you misspell that, you know? So so when you spell uh, corporation with a S-E there, I, I don't see why you can get in trouble for that, for sure. Well, so corpse-o-ation, corporation. <laughs> there you go. Use it freely. Great. Because what school does is they have to kill your spirit. You know, my friend is a researcher on the brain. He's an entrepreneur also. And he found out that what – you know, when a child is first born, they have this curiosity. You know, the thing that the parents are always saying is, don't, 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 you know, don't jump off that. Don't eat dirt. Don't kiss the dog. You know what I mean? But the kid is just naturally incentivized by God or the great spirit. It's in, in their DNA to look for meaning in life. And then they're told to sit down in a cube called a schoolroom and listen to a blithering person, you know, just tell them things they don't want to learn, and they basically flush the meaning of life out of that person. So by the time they're 18, their meaning of life is to look for another cubicle called an office and sit there for the next 40 hours and 40 years. The meaning of life is taken out of a child by the time they're 18 by going to school. And so and that's my poor dad's side. Now, he didn't mean to do that, but that is the education system of the world. The purpose of education was only two things, to create employees, to create soldiers, people who would do what they're told. That's what Zango brings back in people, is that entrepreneurial spirit. We're not afraid of failing. That rejection is part of the process of success. The other part about school that takes out of you is that if you cooperate at test time, that's called cheating. The thing I love about Zango is that when you get together and all this, it's not called cheating. It's called collaboration. It's called supporting people. It's bringing out the best in your fellow human being. That's not cheating, but it's cheating in school. And that's how they do it to people. They think failure is mean. if you make a mistake, you're a failure. The real reality is the more you fail, the more successful you become. I love that. I love that. The more you fail, the more successful you become. I, I, I absolutely love that. It's a great quote. Um, you know, the, the the reality is, you know, Einstein said he didn't fail 99 times when he was creating the light bulb. He said, I I, I found 99 ways it didn't work. And, and that's what, exactly what you're saying is, is that the more times you fail... The, the more successful you're going to be because you're learning on learning along the way. Is that right? Yeah, and I'm, I'm so correct. It wasn't Einstein. It was Edison. Oh, thank you. See, Ed, there Edison, you go. Ed, Edison failed 1,014 times before he invented the light bulb, and he went on to create General Electric as a company. But also Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. You know, Walt Disney was cut, was fired as an editor, editor because he wasn't creative enough inside his corporate, corporation. So when his spirit comes out, he created Disneyland and a mouse. You know what I mean? Yes. So our school systems are really, 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 I mean, education is more important before, but if you want to be an employee, fine, go to school. You want to be a doctor or a lawyer, go to school. But you want to be an entrepreneur, you've you got to get your spirit back, and that's what Zango does. I love it. Now, uh, as, as I'm listening to you talk and I'm, I'm listening about this, I'm obviously getting amped up and excited about life and going out there and conquering the world. You know, I think that it's, when you start talking, it's a, it's a total mind shift. And when you create those different mind shifts, you have to create different habits and you have to do different things to be able to, to take that course of action and, and to do those different things. Uh, what would you say to somebody, uh, what advice would you give someone who just started out their professional career other than becoming a Zango distributor? Because I think that there's there's different habits they have to form. There's different actions they have to do. There's different things. So once I've made that decision that, yeah, I don't want to be that rat on the wheel anymore, the hamster going around, what is it that you would say to that? What advice would you give somebody that's making that other than just becoming a Zango distributor? Well, you have to understand that the, an entrepreneur is exactly opposite from an employee. You know, the, the person that signs your paycheck is an entrepreneur. The person that receives the paycheck is an employee. And my rich dad often said was the only difference between slaves and employee was a paycheck. So the biggest mind sh mindset shift is I never wanted a paycheck. And when I talk to you know people who have been programmed to think a high-paying job was everything, they think I'm speaking, you know, Martian. They say, well, "Why don't you want a paycheck?" Because I wasn't brainwashed like you. 
You see, as the guy who writes your paycheck, who signs the paycheck, controls your life. Now, if you like that, have a great life. But as a little kid, I want to sign my own paycheck. I mean, I don't even need a paycheck. So when you when you get that mindset, you're a free human being. The moment you don't need a paycheck, you're free. And that's what I'll be talking about at Zango. And it's it's what I really do. You know, it's covered in my latest book called A Second Chance, which you can read. But I also cover it in the business of the 21st century. Look, if you want a paycheck, you know what, you know what somebody says, I want my paycheck? That stands for WIMP, W-I-M-P. Where is my paycheck, sir? Where is my paycheck, sir? <laughs> you know, if that's what you want to be, have a great life. Go to school. Become an employee. Become a doctor or a lawyer. And learn nothing about being an entrepreneur. The opposite, you know, my, my, my friends are doctors and lawyers. They think they're entrepreneurs. No, they're high-paid, self-employed people. They still need that paycheck. You know, and I don't know if people know how nasty that paycheck is. Only difference between a slave and an employee is a paycheck, and I want to be the guy that signs the paycheck. I don't want to be the person that receives the paycheck. And I want you to let you know, I talk to every one of my employees the same way. I inspire them. I, I cajole them. I encourage them to be either entrepreneurs. You know, they, a lot of them have their own network marketing businesses. They have their investments and all this. Because the biggest thing that takes away your freedom is a paycheck. And if you can get away from that, you're a free human being. I love that. So it's not something that's holding you back. It shouldn't be the ultimate goal. The ultimate goal should be go out and, and, and become still sustainable is what you're saying. It's really, okay, good, so I don't want a paycheck. Now, if yep. you can get that, you, you kind of get my mindset. Yes, sir. And then when you have that mindset, then you have to have a different skill set. Mindset determines skill set. And the reason that I, I, you know, my friend Donald Trump and I always talk about people becoming, going and joining the network marketing, because the number one skill, there's two skills an entrepreneur must have. They must be able to be strong communicators, and second, they must be strong internally. You know, if they're, you're so afraid of rejection, you're a real wimp. Wimp, where is my paycheck, sir? You know, if you cannot handle rejection and upset and disappointment and loss and failure, then keep your paycheck. That's the biggest difference of all. It's mindset and skill set. So that's why when I was a kid, I had, my rich dad had me going out knocking on doors, not for the money, but to learn to have some guts, some internal fortitude, so when somebody rejected me, said something that they didn't like, I didn't like hearing, that I took it as a lesson, I got stronger, I listened to what they say, I don't object, and I take it as a correction and move on. So that's why, you know, when I was taught to be an entrepreneur, I had to take 100 no's before I got one yes. And the average person takes one no, and then they quit. And they want my, where's my paycheck, sir? So that's the difference. <laughs> So, so don't become a wimp. Well, no, I'm not saying that. We all need wimps in our lives. <laughs> <laughs> but you want those working for you, not uh, not working to become one, right? I'm just saying that it's your choice. You want to be a wimp? You know, where's my paycheck, sir? Or you can be a pimp. Put it in my pocket. <laughs> You know, when I say that to a lot of fundamentalist Christians, they get a little bit upset, but I'm just saying, hey, laugh, you know, laugh a little bit. Yes, sir. But I'm saying you've been programmed to look for that paycheck. You've never, you'll never have your freedom. If you're looking for the government Social Security check, you'll never have your freedom. You want a military pension check, you'll never have your freedom. You want your 401K check, you'll never have your freedom. If you can imagine never needing a paycheck, which what Zangle teaches people, your life will be different. I love it. I absolutely love it. Well, Mr. Kiyosaki, it has been indeed a privilege and an honor. I have uh, I've listened to you. I've read your books. And now getting an opportunity to speak to you today has definitely been one of the highlights of my career. I can't thank you enough for that to be able to come on and, and to be able to share with the Zango Nation and our Zango family on our Get Amped call this morning, sir. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. And, Ryan, if you contact uh, Kathy Grady at the Rich Dad office. Yes, sir. And she will tell you how to get access to this video, The Man Who Could See the Future. All right. I will do that. I Kathy will have Grady. Thanks, you. Ryan. Thank you, sir. Have a glorious day, and thank you so much for coming on our call. I really, really appreciate it. Thank you. Good luck to thank you guys. Thank you, sir. You bet. Have a good day. Bye-bye.